What beer? What beer? <laughs> All right. What brewing system gives you the best beer? There's not really a definite answer, but we're going to show you what we use anyway. It's time for our Brewzilla overview. Hey guys, welcome back to Flying Wombat TV, the channel where it's all about making fun and creative styles of beer with science and biotechnology involved. So today we're not going to be doing a brew day or meme beers or you know experiments or anything like that. We're just going to be doing a equipment overview. So you guys have seen a couple of our brew days using this stuff here. It's the Brewzilla 65 and 35 liter all-in-one brewing vessels. So we're going to take you through uh, these systems today, why we use them, the pros, the cons, general pricing, what kind of features it has, as well as what kind of add-ons that you could get to use these things with to make an already great system even better. And then, uh, oh, of course, we'll compare this to other brewing systems that are available. And now, uh, you know, you guys can make your final call as to what system you use. All right. First up, specifications and, you know, and slash all features because they kind of have a bit of crossover. So first up, you guys can see that it's 65 liters and 35 liters. So that is the total capacity inside these things. Working capacity is a little bit less than that. If you're pushing it right to the edge, you're going to have a lot of boil over and it's going to be a terrible mess for you to clean up. Uh, aside from that, you have things like, uh, you know, the different heating elements. So they're heating elements that are built underneath the uh, the bottom of the of the Brewzilla. So they're not direct contact, so less chance of scorching, which is kind of nice. And you have control over what elements you want to turn on over here. So you've got a 500 watt, 1000 watt and 1500, no, 2000 watt heating element. The 65 liter version uh, uses 15 uh, amp power supply, so a 15 amp outlet. If you don't have a 15 amp outlet in your house, you can get a uh, something like this, just a uh, you know a step down converter. So basically, it's got a um, a 15 amp plug in for the power cord for the Brazilla, and then you plug it into your regular 10 amp uh, wall socket or something like that. Uh, right oh, what else? So we also have things like a pump. So this uh, arm up here. Uh, it has an inbuilt pump inside the Brewzilla and that allows you to recirculate wort, uh, to transfer wort from the Brewzilla into your fermenters, uh, to um, you know, do sparging, all that kind of stuff. So we use two of these things on our brew days. So this is our main brewing vessel and then we use the 35 liter version as our hot liquor ton. So that allows us to do sparging with an inbuilt pump. So we can just sparge the water straight over onto our grain beds on our brew day. Uh, what else have we got to talk about? All right, the control panel here. So you have things like, uh, you know, accurate temperature control and all that sort of stuff. So you know what temperature this thing is at at any given time. You can also set the temperature that you want to leave it at. So you're going to have your, all your elements on, set it to say 65 degree mash. It's not going to go over that. You don't need to monitor it and, you know, keep turning things off and on. It's going to stick there where you set the temperature. You can also do things like uh, step mashes because there's on this particular one, uh, the 3.1, uh, we should have stated at the start, is uh, got the ability to do six different temperature step stages. So what that means is, let's say you want to do a step mash on say something like a lager, maybe you want to mash in at, I don't know, 58 degrees for 10 minutes. Then after 10 minutes, you want it to bump up to 62 degrees for 20 minutes. Then you want it to go to 67 degrees for 30 minutes. Whatever it might be, you have six different options there. So you can set different temperature steps uh, for whatever period of time that you want to set it for. You can also use it uh, quite conveniently as a delayed start. So for something like say uh, a brew day really early in the morning, you could set the first step to be zero degrees for like, I don't know, eight hours or something. You go to sleep and then it turns itself on after eight hours, your second step is like 65 degrees, something like that. So you can leave it there overnight and then when you wake up, you got hot water so you can get straight into your brewing. It's useful for that kind of stuff as well. What else have we got to work with over here? Uh, we've got, you know, a uh, sampling valve slash, you know, uh, emptying valve, something like that. That's across both of them there. Um, and what else? I think that's about it. If I did forget anything, I'll let you know. You've got the ability to stop and start, uh, that sort of stuff as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the equipment or the bits and bobs that come with these things out of the box. So you have a standard chilling coil over here. So a stainless steel chilling coil, just grab that. Uh, nice big one for the 65 litre version. You'll have a smaller one of these for the 35 litre version. Um, you know, great chilling coil, it's stainless steel, so it's really easy to clean. You can use pretty harsh chemicals on it. And it does cool down your work pretty fast. I would say if I've got a um, uh, like 50 litres in, uh, in the boiler and I'm trying to cool it down from boiling and I'm using just, you know, standard, you know, uh, tap water, 
it'll take probably 10 to 15 minutes, I'd say about 15 minutes until it's down to yeast pitching temperature. So if you do want something faster than that, you could use like a plate chiller or a counterflow chiller, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, next a couple of things over here. So you've got this, so a sparge arm, and it comes with a bit of silicon tubing. So this allows you to pop this thing, whoops, pop this thing up in over here, and then let's say you're recirculating your wort, you can put the tube in through the hole here, and it allows you to recirculate your wort over the grain bed to help with that efficiency, extraction, and clarification of your, of your beer. Uh, it also allows you to transfer, you know, to your fermenter. So you just pop this into the fermenter like a long elephant trunk, and then you turn the pump on, transfer all of your work over into your fermenter. Uh, you've also got a couple things over here. So first of all, you've got your um, malt pipe. So this is basically the thing that you put all of your grains into, and then at the end of mashing, you take it up out of the brazilla to let all the water or all the work drip out of that grain bed. So if you look at this thing in here, you can see it's got a false bottom here, and then it's got a, uh, a malt pipe with a malt pipe extension. So basically that means that as this thing is filled up with grains, and you're recirculating that, uh, that wort over top of the grains, as it starts to get higher and higher, it will then go down through this malt pipe in the center here, uh, sorry, through the, the overflow pipe in the center here, and it'll prevent it from all you know, overflowing, and it allows that recirculation of the wort. Um, all right, a couple other things. Uh, you've got this little um, like lifting arm, can't remember the exact word for this. Basically, it allows you to lift this thing out of the actual brewzilla on a brew day when it's really hot. This is like just a, you know, an arm to lift it out with. Uh, you've got these couple little things in here. So first of all, this little silicon black thing is so that when you are filling this thing up with grain, you can pop this over the top here so that as you're pouring all your grain in, you're not gonna get all your grain stuck inside your overflow pipe. Then once this thing has been filled up with grains, you put, this filter on top of it and you hold it down into place with this little uh, you know piece of metal over here just keeps everything locked into place so it doesn't move around during your brew day so the lid um forgive us uh, everything is a little bit dirty still as you can see here uh, we did finish our brew day with this not too long ago and we gave the crypt scrub so that uh, we could do this video for you guys without being completely filthy anyway the lid, uh, it's got a hole in the center. Reason for that is so that you can stick this uh, silicon tube in through the center and you know recirculate that, um, that word over your grain bed. But that's, uh, that's the lid there. Uh, one more thing I should have pointed out here is that you do have quick disconnects, uh, you know, cam locks for your sparge arms. So you can just really quickly and easily push that into place and then lock that down. And then, you know, you can just quickly lift those up and take it off. So just makes it easy instead of fiddling with stuff, screwing things in on a brew day, you can just quickly clamp it in and close it. Another thing to point out here with this, uh, you know, with the sparge arm, with the pump, uh, you do have this, uh, you know, flow control just with this little, um, valve here so if you are looking to slow down your flow rate for whatever reason like uh if you wanted to slow it down as you recirculate or you wanted to slow it down as you transfer into another vessel anything like that it is useful to be able to control uh, control the rate of flow out of the pump all right so now diving inside to the actual uh, vessel itself uh, first and foremost, you have uh, a pump inlet just here, and then you've got the uh, the sampling valve uh, over here to the to the right or your left or whatever. Uh, so basically, um, allows you to suck in the the liquid from here, and then it gets pumped out the uh, the sparge arm up here. Uh, next thing, you have a false bottom that goes on the actual bottom of your boiler itself. So. This thing goes in there like so, so that uh, you know any extra grain, debris, any extra trub, all that kind of gunk from a brew day, especially like, for example, a, um, a hoppy cake. You get a whole big hop cake settling down there after a brew day. That doesn't get sucked into your pump and absolutely ruin your system, as well as helps prevent all that stuff from getting into your fermenter as well uh, after a brew day. Okay, so now talking about add-ons. Uh, things that I would recommend and that we use to make these systems even better. So firstly, these are thick neoporine jackets. Uh, highly, highly recommend getting them. It just makes everything more temperature stable. So if you put it up to 65 degrees, an hour later, it'll be like 64 degrees. It's not gonna lose much temperature if you have one of these on it. It does lose more temperature without it. So each of these costs like 25 bucks each, I think. We'll put links and everything, you know, all over the place. Uh, so really worth getting those. Next thing, uh, hop spider. I'm guessing most of you guys that are brewing would use one of these, but I thought it's worth mentioning anyway. Get a hop spider so that you can hang it inside your, you know, your boiler. 
Um, and on a brew day, you can throw all your hops in here so that that hop debris doesn't get all throughout the rest of the liquid, makes it easier to uh, transfer into your fermenters and everything like that. Also a lot easier for cleaning. Next, a Whirlpool arm. So we've mentioned in all of our brew day videos that you should do a Whirlpool at some point or another. Uh, this is one really, really easy way to do it. So from memory, I think this was just under 30 bucks, maybe around 20 to $25, something like that. Uh, and basically this replaces that um, sparge arm you, that you saw earlier. You can pop this in, obviously this is inside the tank when you're using it, inside the boiler. Pop it in and then you turn the pump on and it just starts recirculating that liquid in a whirlpool. So really useful for hop additions with whirlpooling or for just generally helping your uh, boiler cool down when you're trying to bring it down to yeast pitching temperature. Uh, last, uh, uh, last couple add-ons that we'll mention here. Big one is the chilling coil. So this is the standard chilling coil that comes with the uh, Brazilla. Perfectly adequate. It does cool it down in about 15 minutes depending on the temperature of your water mains. Uh, so it is good, it is useful. 15, 20 minutes depending on the day. If it's a hot day in summer, it does take longer. But uh, you can get something called a counterflow chiller. So this one over here is called the Colossus. Uh, this one was about 260, 260 bucks from memory. Again, links and all that all there somewhere. But this one here is a counterflow chiller. So what that basically means is, um, here is where the beer goes in, here is where the beer comes out. You just put these clamps on the corresponding spots on the Brewzilla, so that, whoop, we've got water coming out there. So then you'd attach your, uh, your water hoses onto here and here. So as the beer comes flowing in through the chiller, it's inside an inner tube inside this thing, and then that cold water is flowing around that inner tube. So basically, uh, you're counter flow chilling that beer as it goes in one way, you got the cold water around that and then that can go straight into the fermenter. So if you run this properly, you can basically do a one and done. So as the beer or as the work comes through this coil, it will be cooled down to pitching temperature by the time it comes out of the coil. So it can really cut down your, uh, your cooling times, which is really useful for preventing, you know, bacterial infection, for cutting down brew day time, for making sure you can pitch your yeast faster. There's all kinds of benefits to it. but. That is a, uh, a add-on I would recommend if you're willing to get it. If not, the uh, the standard chiller out of the box does a perfectly uh, good job as well. Alrighty, lucky last, these extensions up here. So if you do want to squeeze a little bit more out of your uh, out of your brewing system, you want to make a bigger batch, or you just want to prevent something like a boil over if you're running really close to the borderline at the top here, you can get these boiler uh, these Brewzilla extensions. So this one on the um, on the 35 liter version gives you an extra, I think it's an extra 15 liters from memory. And this one over here on the 65 liter version will give you an extra 20 liters or something along those lines. I'll put the actual numbers up there. But it is really useful if you're trying to do an extra big batch or if you're running really close to the top and you want to prevent that boil over when you're going from mashing to boiling really useful to have those extensions that attach to these and we've used them in our brew day videos as well out of all the add-ons i would say that is one of the ones that i would recommend the most because if you are running close to the border it is just worth getting the uh the, that extra extension so that you don't have that huge mess to clean up later so for the uh the 35 liter version i think it's about 60 to 70 dollars for the 65 liter version i think it was about 90 dollars give or take Pros and cons. So pros, it's an all-in-one system and that's the biggest pro. It means that you save a lot of space because this thing acts as your mash tun, your hot liquor tun and your boiler all in one. So because you can mash in and then take all the grains out with the, with the malt pipe all in the one system, huge saving on space. It is very, very compact. Another pro is the heating. So you do have you know control over what elements you turn on and off, which does give you uh, more flexibility with how hot or how hard and fast you want to go when heating up your liquid. And because they're not exposed elements, like they're not elements that sit directly in the liquid, they, uh, they sit underneath the bottom of the floor, so the floor of the boiler heats up, uh, it's got less, uh, less scorching. So I've never had a scorch problem when I've been brewing. Uh, in case that doesn't make sense, but what that means is basically if you burn, you know, a bunch of beer on the bottom or around the element. Um, with exposed elements that sit directly in the liquid, that can be a problem because they heat up too hard too fast. And then you burn a bunch of sugar on the heating element. I've never really had a problem with that on any of these. So, um, you know, it's not gospel, don't take my word for it, but I've just never had that issue personally, and I think that's a pro.
Another pro, it really is an all-in-one system in more ways than one. So aside from being able to do your mashing, your boiling, all that kind of stuff, and your cooling down all in the one vessel, it's also got all the features on it that come inbuilt with uh, for the Bruzilla for you. So you have all of your different temperature controls, you have your delayed starts, you have your different steps, your different times, your different automated sequences. You have your pump that comes inbuilt inside the Bruzilla, so you don't have to have a separate pump uh, with your unit to then connect to and flow things around. It's all inside the one thing, nice and pretty packed together. So you don't need different bits and pieces all over the place to run your brew day. You can control all your temperatures, your different heating elements, your pump, uh, the different uh, automated settings that you have going on, all on the one system. You don't need different control panels. You don't need a separate pump. You don't need separate uh, heating element controls. It's all in one for you. Uh, another semi-pro is sparging. So with something like a three vessel system, obviously you can sparge, there's no issues there. But if you're using brew in a bag, it's very hard to do fly sparging. So we will do a video on this, uh, a short one in future, fly sparging versus batch sparging. But basically what it means is, with fly sparging, you can have your malt pipe sitting on top of the brewzilla after you start draining out all the liquid. And then you can just let all that, uh, that hot water drain over top of your, um, of your grain bed gradually at an even flow rate. Whereas with something like uh, brew in a bag, it's kind of really hard to sparge. And if you do sparge, it tends to be more of like a tea bag sparge or a batch sparge where you just put it into a separate pot, you run water over it, mix it around, mash it around, and then let it drain out again. So it is faster to do fly sparging, it is more efficient, and it's just a little bit easier as well. Uh, last pro on the list uh, comes down to cleaning. Because it all is an all-in-one vessel, you're just by nature using less equipment, which means there's just less cleaning. Uh, if you're using something like a three-vessel system, it means you've got to clean three vessels. When you're using an all-in-one, all you're cleaning is this. It's the one thing. It's the one boiler, it's the one mash tun, it's the one tank. Yes, you've got to clean all the other bits and pieces you use with it, but on the most part, there is a bit less cleaning than with three-vessel systems. Now talking disadvantages. Uh, okay, big disadvantage between an all-in-one and a three-vessel system. With a three-vessel system, you can do multiple brew days a lot quicker. So if you've got a hot liquor ton, a mash ton, and a boiler, when you move, your, when you're doing your, your mashing, you're already heating up your hot liquor, your hot water, to go and do your sparging. So if you're using an all-in-one system and you don't have a second brewzilla, it's a bit hard to do that. You need a separate vessel to heat up water to do your sparging with. Uh, second problem is uh, when you actually want to do multiple brew days at once, you have to finish the full brew day with your one vessel before you can start your next batch of beer. Whereas with something like a three vessel system, once you transfer your wort from the mash tun into the boiler, you can then start mashing in your second beer. You can start your second brew day halfway through your first brew day. So you can't really do that with an all-in-one system and that's a little bit annoying if you want to do multiple batches in one day. Next disadvantage is uh, efficiency of use. So you do get a little bit less extract potential, a little bit less efficiency with a one vessel system versus a, uh, a three vessel system. And that's the reason why most breweries will use three vessel or two vessel over and all in one because they can drain out all the liquid out of their mash tun, put it over into their boiler, start that boiling. While that thing's heating up to a boil, they can then do their fly sparging over top of their grain bed. And it does get them uh, a bit more efficiency than you would get with an all-in-one system. As well as being able to have a bit more flexibility with your brew day and with your timings and uh, just, you know, getting uh, more, more time in your day to get more done. Uh, last couple of disadvantages, I guess. Uh, one would be the pump. This is more of a, um, uh, a peeve of mine rather than a full disadvantage. I just wish the pump was more powerful. And because the pump is inbuilt into the unit, it's just a bit of a pain to open this thing up, replace the pump, replace it with a stronger pump, and then put it back together. And it's kind of also a pain to drill more thermo wells to then, uh, sorry, to drill more holes to be able to attach those TC connections and do an upgraded pump. It is a, you could do it, it would just be a bit of a pain to do it, which is why I haven't really done it. So I do wish the pump was more powerful. That being said, it is adequate for your standard brew day. I just wish I had a little bit more power to help make transfers faster, that sort of thing. Final disadvantage from a home brewing perspective would be cost. So this system here, and I guess we're tying in the disadvantages with costs now, uh, this brewing system here, the 65 liter version, was about $900 uh, Aussie from memory, uh, whatever that is in USD. And this one over here, the 35 liter version, was about 650 or thereabouts. So 
They are one of the cheaper uh, all-in-one vessel systems going around by far, much cheaper than something like a Grainfather, but uh, they're still a lot pricier than like a brew in a bag method with a big pot and a hot plate and that sort of thing. So cost is a bit of a drawback, but if you are willing to jump over that hurdle and spend a bit more money to get a system like this, I do think the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to functionality and ease of use, but there is that you know, barrier to entry, which is you know the price tag. Last thing, talking about total costs on the equipment that we use here. Uh, the boilers themselves, with all their standard out of the box stuff, this one's about 900, that one's about 650, give or take rough numbers. And then talking about all the add-ons that we've included on top of this stuff, you know, including like the hop spider, the counterflow chiller, the, uh, the whirlpool arm, the extensions for both systems. We have an extension for this one as well. The, um, the, the pump extensions, all that kind of stuff. Um, all the extensions and all the add-ons probably came come to about five to six hundred dollars on top of these things So all together this setup using two brewzillas to do your brew days is about two grand So that is a bit of a, a con I guess if you don't want to spend that much money You can get away with just using a big hot water urn or like a uh, just a boiler without all the pump and all the extra features To reduce your cost. So there's a digi boil which is Basically the same as this, just without the extra, you know, pump capabilities or the uh, control pad here. Um, so that is one option if you do want to have two vessels to use as your hot liquor ton and your mash ton. But um, yeah, that's the total cost there. It's about two grand, give or take, for all the stuff that we use in our brew day. Okay, so I guess final verdict on, you know, what system is best sort of thing. I mean, we're biased. We use this because we, in our opinion, think it's best for us, but it's an entirely personal thing. You know, uh, there's no one system that fits all, no one size that fits all. So if you're looking for a bigger uh, system, like a 65 liter, this is great. If you're looking for 35 liters, that's great as well. If you're looking to combine the two to do a two vessel brew day, we do that, so we think it's pretty awesome. Then you've got like three vessel systems, which do give you that extra efficiency, that extra control, that extra modification ability. So if you do want more of that fixability and you're not hampered by size or the extra cleaning on a brew day, maybe a three vessel is the way to go. If you don't want to spend all the extra bucks and all this stainless steel and everything, a brew in a bag is the way to go. So there is no one answer on what is the best brewing system. All I can say is that for us, for the type of brewing we want to do, for the 50 liter batch sizes we want to do, using the 65 liter and the 35 liter brewzillas with the add-ons that we've got, that's the best brewing system for us. So it all comes down to how much size you have, how much money you want to spend, and uh, what kind of flexibility you want on your brew day. All right, guys, thanks for watching our overview of the Brewzilla all-in-one brewing system. If you do have any thoughts or any questions about the system that we didn't answer today, please drop a comment below. We'll be happy to answer you. Uh, maybe it's something about the way that you guys want to use it or the way that we use it. Always happy to have a chat and, uh, and answer any questions you might have. And if there are any brewing systems that you guys know about in the market or that you guys use that you think are particularly awesome that you want others to get around and check out, drop a link below so that we can all you know get around and have a look at what the best systems in the market are. Um, but look, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, you know, if you're feeling generous, please give us a like and a subscribe. It does help us out a whole lot. But until next time, happy brewing.